Hey Dragon Slayers, today's video is all about cooking on the PE diet. So 90% of Americans don't like to cook, and that's the vast majority of my friends. And today, it's easier than ever to go through your entire life without cooking a thing. Unfortunately, this has been unmitigated disaster for our health. The reality is that everyone who is in the business of selling food is trying to profit as much as possible from small local restauranters all the way up to the big food companies that manufacture packaged food. And when you are trying to profit from selling food, the less protein you give people, the better. You can see this everywhere around you. You want to supersize your fries and soda? These empty calories mostly sugar and oil, will cost you almost nothing, but the amount of meat on that burger is tightly controlled right down to the very gram. And believe us, if you are not getting anything extra in there, the fact that protein is the most expensive macronutrient by a wide margin, while empty calories from sugar and oil are cheap, has been a huge economic driver of obesity and diabetes. The very best way to fight back against all of this is by buying and cooking your own food. <clears throat> Hopefully, everyone reading this is already a gourmet chef, but we know that that's not the truth and that we're not preaching to the choir here. But many of us find that cooking can be quite daunting, uh, if not impossible, but like anything else, Cooking is only difficult until you learn how. And since the majority of us are suffering from chronic diseases of poor diet, learning to cook just might save your life. Learning to cook is all about learning to cook protein. And yes, that does dovetail quite nicely with the overall theme of his book. The good news is that almost all of the proteins that you encounter can be cooked with just a few simple techniques, as with all the other information in his book. He wants to give you 20% of the knowledge that would allow you to cook 80% of the foods that you will encounter. First of all, let's start with the equipment that you'll need. Buying expensive equipment is, and <clears throat> is daunting, and it's probably a shorter list than you would have guessed, and many of these items will, be, will last you a lifetime. So you only have to buy them just once. So his cooking essentials list is number one, a cast iron skillet. He says that this is probably the single most important thing that you can own for cooking protein. Number two is a chef knife. You really need to get a good one so you can use it for everything. Number three is a cutting board. The bigger, the better. Number four is a cast iron pot or Dutch oven used for braising. Uh, number five is a mixing bowl. Ideally, non-reactive and heavy stainless steel is good. The bigger, the better. Number six is a non-stick skillet, ideally something safe like ceramic for cooking delicate proteins like eggs and fish. Number seven is a spatula. Number eight is a sheet pan for oven roasting. And number nine is tongs for flipping steak. So he goes on to say that if we had to add one more item to the list of equipment you might want to have for cooking protein, it would be an instant read thermometer probe. This will allow you to cook the perfect steak and make sure that poultry is the safe temperature without being overcooked. The basic template for cooking foods in the PE diet, center your meat around a high quality, properly raised animal protein, then throw in some non-starchy vegetables as a side dish. We will go there through the five most common strategies for cooking proteins, pan searing, sauteing, braising, roasting, and grilling. In order to cook any protein, you will need some salt to season it. Someone could probably write another entire book on why kosher salt is your very best choice for cooking, but the interest of time will just going to give you the trust us motto. You will need some sort of fat to cook most proteins. Our favorites are butter and ghee and fruit oils such as avocado oil and olive oils. Because of its incredibly high smoke point, avocado oil is his very favorite with ghee as a second close choice. As always, avoid any industrial seeds like the plague, corn oil, or vegetable oil. So I agree with pretty much everything Ted Naiman says and when it comes to cooking. There's a few caveats. I prefer Himalayan pink salt over kosher salt. 
but the instant read thermometer is an absolute must. I'll put it in the description below, the one that I use, and I think it's every cook's like a savior. I have made some incredible meats through this. That's what I've got for you guys today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and you can support me on Patreon in the description below. And remember that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.